Hi, this is Andrew. Thanks for joining me. Today's video is about using cryptographic keys for logging into SSH uh, into a Linux system. Uh, in this case, we're using CentOS and we're going to create keys, a public private key pair, and that will allow us to log into the system. So first, we're already logged in and actually we use keys to uh, a key to log into this system to begin with. Um, I could actually just copy that key over to a new profile, use the same key to log on in that system. But that's not what I want to do. I want to start over or I want to have separate keys for separate accounts. So if I wanted to look at that, I could do, if I just type ls from here, I, uh, I don't see anything in my home directory. But if I do ls-la, I will see a directory, a hidden directory called ssh. And if you look at that, the permissions on that directory are read, write, and execute for the CentOS account. That's the account I'm logged in as. So if I now switch to change directory into the account, I can do an ls- uh, I can just do an ls, and I have an authorized key file in there, but I want to see the permissions on that. So that is also owned by CentOS, uh, and in this case, it is read and write. These are important um, things that we're going to need to keep in mind when we move forward and uh, create this directory for our new account. So first thing we're going to do is create an account for a new user. So we're going to do add user, and we'll call that account Fred. And I need to be logged in as root, so I will do sudo su dash, and now I'm logged in as root, and I can try that command again. Add user Fred. Uh, so now I have a Fred account, and if I do ls dash home, I'll see I have a Fred directory there. So um, I haven't created an account, a password for Fred. I'm not going to worry about that right now uh, because we won't be logging in using a password. So what I want to do is um, start by creating the key pair. And to do that, I'm going to use a program that was installed when we installed PuTTY. i um, actually logged into the system using PuTTY, and I'm going to use a program that was installed with PuTTY. So if I go here, oops, PuTTY, and we have PuTTY Gen. So right here, it gives us, uh, it's a key generator. Uh, there's no key right here. Types of keys, RSA, DSA. Um, we want to use RSA. We'll use 2048 as the key size. Now I don't want to load, I want to generate. Now when I click generate, it actually, I need to randomize things. Computers are not good at random movements, random digits. Um, everything is pseudo random and that can actually cause problems. So by moving it around randomly, that adds human randomness to it. Now we have a public key here and we have a comment and I'm going to say this is, I'm going to just give it Fred as the name. Now, so that shows up at the end and um, f what I need to do now is actually save the private key. Um, I could, it's saying, are you sure you want to save it without a passphrase? If I put a passphrase here, I would need to enter this passphrase every time I use that key. Obviously, for security purposes, that's a really good idea. For what we're doing, uh, I don't want to do that. And if you have a relatively secure system, um, it might not be that critical. These are decisions that you need to make. So I'm going to save the private key without a passphrase. And I'm going to just put it on the desktop. I'm going to call it Fred. Um, and... Now we have it right here. If we want to look at what's inside of it, I can, I can open it with Notepad and see. It is a an encryption key. It, it, it just has the mathematical formula, the, the, the private key that we created that matches with the public key that's right here. So next step, I want to copy this public key. I grab that. And I will I'll do right click and copy. And I need to save it into that same authorized key file in the Fred directory. So first thing, cd slash home slash Fred. And if I do ls dash la, I don't have that .ssh directory. So I'm going to make dir 
and I'm going to call it dot SSH. Uh, so now I can CD into dot SSH and I can do, let's see if I have nano installed, authorized keys. And now it's prompting me for what do I want in this file? I just copied this, uh, that text. So I'm gonna just, because it's putty, I can right click to paste and I should have that whole thing in there. So I'm just gonna do control X, yes, authorize keys. And if I compare it and I do, uh, let's do less on home centos.ssh. Authorize keys. Uh, there's what's in my, the one for CentOS. And if I do the same thing, I can do less on this authorized keys. And I see something very similar here. So it is just the, the account created for Fred. So there's my key that's created. But if you remember, I was really looking at the permissions. So let's do a, let's back out to Fred's home directory. If I do ls dash la here, if I were Fred when I created this, everything would be fine. But I wasn't Fred, I was root. I could have switched to being Fred and created it and everything would be, I wouldn't say fine, but closer. But what I wanna do is I wanna change the ownership of this file because if Fred tries to log in with uh, this file, he's not the owner and it's not gonna work properly. And the permissions on this are a little too open for what we're looking for. Anyone who logs into the system can go in and see uh, see that file. So let's do chown and I want it to be Fred colon Fred. And the file we're looking at is, or actually the directory is dot SSH. Uh, now I can do cd.ssh and just, I'm going to keep, I'm going to do the same thing, except I want this to be the authorized, authorized keys file. So now if I do an ls here, well, if I do an ls dash la, uh, I see that Fred owns it. Permissions are still not what I wanted. And if you remembered from the CentOS, my permissions were, uh, more restrictive. So. I want to do, I'll do here, chmod, and the permissions I want are 600 on authorized keys. And now I can see that it does match what we had uh, previously uh, for the CentOS account. So let's do that for the directory as well, except the directory was a little bit different. It was C C H mod. it was read, write, and execute, so we want 700 and it's going to be um, dot SSH. Now if we do ls dash LA, now that's looking a lot better for what we want. So now, assuming we've done everything properly, uh, we could log in, to, log in using putty and using that Fred uh, key. So, before I do that, just think about the things we did. Obviously, we, we used the putty key gen to create those keys, but everything else we did within Linux was very much uh, Linux. It was very conventional. We, I, create, I created a file, I made myself root, I created a, a person, I created a file or a, a directory, and then I created a file inside of it and pasted stuff inside of that. Um, I could actually take that, you know, take any of that information, I could copy it, any way I want to different systems. Um, if I wanted to, instead of copying this authorized key uh, file that I just, that I have right here, I, don't, I want that SSH. Instead of copying this one, I could have moved or copied the one that's in CentOS. Um, however, I want to get the file here, I can do that. Uh, that is just, you know, we. I can do that any way I want. This is this is just Linux. Then I needed to change ownership and change uh, permissions on there. Now, if I were in a different situation uh, and I were logged in as Fred, I could go ahead and create that key and do everything there. One of the things that's really important is um, if I were logged in as Fred and I were logged in with username and password, absolutely want to verify that the key works before we disable access 
for logins. This system doesn't actually allow interactive logins. Uh, you can't brute force it because there are no passwords to brute force. So that's an important um, security aspect, but it's also you don't want to disable things to that point until you're sure that you can get in the, the way you expect. So what I'm going to do now, and I can just leave this here, I'm going to open up a new putty session and let's go to appearance and change this to make it bigger and easier to see once we get in. Um, so under session, I'll just type the IP address 172.16.123.1.1. Now I'm going to go down to SSH and under auth, private key for authentication. And this is just saying, I want to use this Fred key right here. So I'm going to browse, there's my desktop, there's my Fred key. Now I can go back to session and if I want to save this, I can give it a name and save it as Fred. And now I have this here. Next time I come back, I can load it and it'll have the IP address, it'll have that key. Um, if I wanted to do anything else, I could put a username here. I could type Fred here and then it wouldn't even prompt me for the username. I'm not going to do that because I want you, I would just want to show what's happening. So there, log in as, and I type Fred. And now um, authenticated, logged in as Fred. So I can do ls here, I can do ls-la, and I can see that SSH directory, cd.ssh. And then I do ls here, there's my authorized keys. I can look at that uh, because as Fred, I'm the owner of it. I can look at it, I can see it, I can do anything I want with it. So one more thing to look at, just um, it might be obvious or it might not, but if I select Fred and load this and try to load a new session on this, I do load, log in as, if I type in sent OS, that's not the account, that's gonna look at the key, at the at a, a different key that's in a diff that's in the CentOS profile, and it's going to say server refused our key because the keys don't match. So um, that's where it's not just any key; it has to be the matched pair that we created using Putty Keygen. So in this case, each account has different key pairs. Uh, I could use the same key pair for multiple accounts if I wanted. Um, I could use the same key pair actually even on multiple systems. All I have to do is copy that key to multiple systems so I could have the same key to log into three or four different systems if I wanted and if that met my security needs. So that's all I have for you today. Thanks for watching.